There we go. Uh, don't fall. Okay, I'm wearing my Indiana Jones hat and my, I have my uh, bull whip here. Quite proficient with it. It's a really cool tool and a weapon. Uh, but I'm wearing this specifically because of this guy right here, 38J9N31, uh, which is a little bit of a story. And uh, it's cold out here, so I'm going to have to swap hats and um, uh, step this along uh, here. But uh, uh, so this actually my this is a Indiana Jones style Stetson. It's new. My uh, bullwhip is uh, very old. It predates uh, the Indiana Jones movies. Um, and I had to get a new one of these. They're, they're leather and they really stand up around here, except for when your truck runs over them. <laughs> so just because you didn't know they were there. Anyway, um, so uh, we have 38J9N31, which is a, uh, is a story in itself. And we won't go into the, uh, the aspects of this other than the 38, the 31, and and the J9N are all significant in their own rights, um, and they tie us into our ice woo. And today we're going to discuss ice woo, and ice woo deserves a little bit of a setup, a little bit of a description. And what happened was I had fallen in years ago with a group of um, uh, galactic information pirates. Okay. And this group is uh, uh, cohesive, they have uh, method, uh, they have analysis, they have uh, check sums, they have balance in what they do, and uh, they have results. Very important. It's uh, important that we don't have, um, uh, that we just don't accept results without the validation of the reciprocity with the method and the continual refinement of technique. And so the um, information pirates are uh, Dick Allgaier and his crew of, um, of remote viewers. Now, there's all kinds of remote viewers. There's all kinds of people out there that say they do remote viewing and don't have a fucking clue, all right? So I once asked, uh, uh, way back in the, in the day, asked uh, Dick Allgaier uh, to school me on this, right? And so he did. He, he had this little course thing, and, and uh, I went through it. I, this was when I had the colon cancer, and so I was um, otherwise occupied a great deal of my time. But anyway, so I, I sampled that course. And I say sampled because I couldn't devote myself to it. But one, two, three lessons, and, and every single lesson there was a uh, staggering uh, realization of the power of the technique when method is applied. That is to say, when it's not just random musings and, um, you know, uh, this kind of stuff uh, floating up through uh, your consciousness, uh, your awareness. Um, but when you apply these methods, it's, it's uh, statistically unlikely that you would achieve these results in anything other than a method-driven, um, or, or uh, through a, a technique that's driven by the method. In other words, uh, if uh, the remote viewer said, uh, you're going to remote view target XYZ, and they'd already pre-described target XYZ years ago, and thousands of people had remote viewed it, and they'd all come to the same, fundamentally the same uh, awareness of what that target was, then you would have to grant that the method as their approach uh, is given at least directs the awareness to uh, that target and facilitates um, a consistent uh, and s seemingly consensus description. So everybody sees the same thing in these, in these um, uh, schooling examples. And it's a skill that way. So you have to be taught 
basically how to hold your chisel to cut the mortise without nicking too deep, all of that kind of stuff, mentally, right? And some people are going to be better at it than others because some people have better eye-hand coordination, that sort of thing, you know, analogy. Anyway, though, so Dick Allgaier's group is, is very, very, very proficient. And I call them uh, information pirates because they go on out and, um, and pirate, you know, without so much as a buy your leave, they snatch that information right out of there and bring it back. <laughs> so, and they're a bunch of cool guys, right? So anyway, so um, I, as I say, I've fallen in with them. We've done some interesting things over the past. Most notably coming up with the, the I mean, most spectacularly, was the Joe Rogan and uh, President Trump interview language, right, and imagery. Never happened or has not happened so far, and, but nonetheless, the imagery and everything in the forecast was um, spot on, 100% drawings and all of that. So anyway, so they're very good, very accurate. And I think, yeah, that's, uh, anyway, so the, um, uh, we've done some projects over the past and, and I was working on some interesting ideas and I thought to myself, well, maybe there's a potential that uh, the information pirates here can go on out and pirate out nuggets of information out of universe that will provide us some very excellent um, clues and guides uh, to activities that we should be pursuing. And so I set about two particular uh, targets for them one of which is very difficult to represent, which I'll describe now, and then there the, this other one here is the 38J9N31, which is not so difficult to describe, and I'll show you a picture of the damn thing. <laughs> and, and then we will await the um, uh, results of the Dick Allgaier's crew putting together a video, if they will. I think it's important enough now to bring it out and discuss it uh, at this particular time because it's very encouraging and very um, illuminating and illust illustrative, uh, very uh, much an illustration of what the potential there is this year in Year Woo. So anyway, so um, now this, this stuff has nothing to do with politics or it has everything to do with politics depending on which way you want to look at it. Uh, but first, let's go into the, the first of the two targets, which I don't have the target designation here, and that one was not particularly important, the designation-wise, okay? And so this particular target was designated this way because of the um, uh, tie-in between these numbers in a particular video. But uh, the first target was to get Dick and uh, crew to examine... Um, source material for a galactic internet. In other words, is it possible if we had a target of saying to ourselves basically, what do we have to discover in order for humanity to tie into the already existing intergalactic internet? And uh, we can sort of hypothesize that it exists because we're going to invent it if it doesn't exist and ergo it, if some other species came along and made their own internet, radio, TV, got into the electromagnetic spectrum as we have, then we would expect at some point they would have decided that they needed to talk to each other and communicate in some fashion uh, across great distances and um, uh, involving interplanetary or interstellar or intergalactic. And so they would have invented an intergalactic internet. All we have to do is tap into it because it already exists. It's sort of circuitous logic. There is some, some fundamental soundness to it um, because we're setting about to invent it now if it doesn't exist, but I suspect it does exist, and all we need to do is to invent our network card, put them in our computer, that will translate out the information. And so my thinking was at that time, let's have a target that basically centers on that network card and what is necessary for us as humanity to tie into the intergalactic um, internet. Not that we would understand anything, right? There's, there's the other hurdles, is the thousand years it's gonna be uh, necessary for us to be able to crack some of these languages and thinking and that sort of thing. Uh, but uh, just the mere connection gets us started. 
And I think that would be very valuable. I think we'll find a lot of simple stuff. You know, the children's games in some of these uh, uh, civilizations might be, uh, you know, beyond our elemental ph physics. <laughs> and so, but if we can crack one or two of those, those children's games, boy, we might have something there. Anyway, so, okay, so I said, all right, let's go out and do that. And the guys did that, but there's not a whole lot to say on that because that's a long-term process. I'm going to have to, um, the, the thing's going to have to be parsed. The results are going to have to be parsed. We're going to have to look at things from various different angles, trying not to restrict our thinking about this and uh, pursue each and every one of the angles until we run into a dead end that, that says we shouldn't be wasting our time on it anymore. That's basically the approach that we have to go on there. Okay, so, so that was target number one, uh, which was the, uh, the network card, basically, for our intergalactic internet. And this other um, thing here was a, um, a unique happenstance. So there's this guy, um, uh, Mars Anomalies is his name on YouTube. He's a, he's a good guy. He's one of these people that analyzes Mars photos and finds all kinds of really cool stuff in there. And uh, the stuff is really there. These guys are not batshit crazy. Uh, they're fighting NASA, who obscures all of this, because they don't want to tell us our real history. And so I was thinking about real history, and then serendipitously, in a synchronistic fashion, a, um, uh, Mars Anomalies put up a, a, a group of videos uh, about Antarctica and the censoring of Antarctica. Now, these, this is a little tricky at the moment because we can't, I can't actually put the, the, if I put the link down there, for whatever reason, it shows that this video is not found. But you can go to his channel and click on video. You can go to his YouTube channel, Mars Anomalies. You'll see it here in a, in a minute. And you can click on his um, uh, videos and go down into the videos there, and you'll see it where it's 38 minutes and 31 seconds long. And it, and it talks about the censoring of Antarctica. In there, at 18 minutes, you'll see a particular image that I used as the target for uh, Dick Allgaier's um, uh, information pirates here, okay? And so galactic pirates too, no less. Uh, so anyway, so um, let's, let's do that. Let me see, I have that set up here. So here, okay, so let's, Go to that are coming this. down from it. In other words, it continues uh, on. I don't have my, my speaker on. I'll Over the age of 50, okay, so coffee can leave a permanent mark commercials on here, the brain. Anyway, it's the censoring As a brain and memory specialist, really there, when my patients ask me what they can do to improve their memory, the ad and, um, it now what brings up this video, and the guy's channel is Mars Anomalies and Beyond, and uh, you can go to the video section there, and pull up this particular video. But if I give you the link, for whatever reason, it shows up as a video not found. Hmm. Anyway, and we've had this issue with myself and the, uh, the information pirates are passing this along to a lot of people. So I'm not, I, I don't know what's going on and I'm not gonna characterize it. But you can see here that, that he's got some circles and this is Antarctica. This is a video about Antarctica. He's talking about some stuff that we can clearly see in Antarctica. If you see these, the very large green circle, that's a particular plateau. He's describing some stuff here. And then look in the back, and you Whether see this that, is some uh, kind of weird uh, describing and marking clouds. This particular area, but it continues here, on. It's taller than that. What is that in the background? What looks like a skyscraper? From the Anybody know the answer to that? In front. Okay. And also look at the the shapes and the nature of these hillsides and such. This is an extremely um, interesting video that he's got here. And he's got uh, at least two others on this series, one very long. And he goes into why he did it and the, um, and the nature of it. I'm, I'll let you guys go watch that because that's not my point to discuss it. My point was to discuss the, what we did with this. Okay, the guys, uh, I follow his channel, I watch his stuff all the time. And um, here's what I did with it. I used this as a target, I took a screenshot on this particular day at this time and made out this target right here for that specific object right back there where the cursor is at the end of that red arrow, which is some form of a uh, structure or a habitation. And I wanted to know everything the information pirates could tell me about that 
structure and, and or habitation. Uh, you know, active, current, active, ancient, whatever. And so um, <laughs> this, this is a really nasty thing to do, guys, because this video is really a kind of a teaser uh, about what the uh, information pirates uh, were able to go and thieve for us. Um, they went on out and they've discovered something. But they're information explorers. They're not really pirates in that sense. It's lying around. They're just picking it up, okay? They're picking it up and bringing it back. And as far as we know, there's no intergalactic um, information archaeological laws or that sort of thing. Uh, so, uh, but they went out and they picked up a ton of information about that particular structure. Uh, and the people, or I won't, I won't go into it. I won't go into to what they were... Uh, what they've discovered about that, okay? But it is truly fascinating when you combine their seeming um, unconnected to this descriptions, and then you see the, the structure that houses their descriptions. Absolutely fascinating. And so I've, I've prompted them a little bit to try and put together a video on this, and I will let them do that, or if they decide they're not going to, we'll, I'll see how much of it I can discuss, because it's quite fascinating. And in its own way, this ties, way, uh, ties back into the intergalactic um, internet. So uh, basically, this, uh, that's, the, uh, that's it. This is the video. This is a little teaser uh, on this particular uh, subject and what we've been doing with it, and what we've been doing with the um, information coming from uh, Dick's crew, or the RV crew. I shouldn't call him, shouldn't characterize him as Dick's crew, but I mean, he's just one of my main contacts through, you know, a couple old men bitching at each other, right? <laughs> so, so anyway, um, uh, but they're great guys, and man, are they talented. Man, are they talented, and it will absolutely blow you away uh, when we can get them to uh, lay out what they've actually discovered about a very, very, very specific spot in Antarctica. And I told you, this is your woo. The woo is going to be thick and deep. We're barely into month two, and um, uh, the results on, on this part of it are uh, foreshadowing great things uh, this summer in the Northern Hemisphere, not summer down there. Anyway, guys, uh, that's it. So go check out the uh, videos. Get yourself all primed for uh, finding out the real, real, real facts brought to you by remote viewing about uh, that object right there.